Deborah. Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the first session of this program. As uh, Deborah has said, you are going to learn about Python arithmetic operations. So, uh, why uh, do we need Python arith arithmetic operations? Uh, we need Python arithmetic operations in our daily to daily lives uh, for mathematical operations such as uh, addition, uh, subtractions of values. So in Python, we have seven types of uh, Python arithmetic operations. You are going to see these types of uh, arithmetic opera operators with their meanings and also the examples. As we can see in these tables, the first operator here is the addition operator, which is used to add two values. We have the example here, uh, x plus y plus 2. Another uh, Python arithmetic operator is the subtraction operator, which is used to subtract two values. We have the example there. Another operation that we have in Python is the multiplication operator, which is used to multiply two values. As you can see, we have x multiplied by y. Another example of a Python arithmetic operator is the division operator. We have got a different types of division operators, but this one here is the normal division. Uh, it is used to divide two values, and the results will always be a float number. The results will be in decimal form. So another type of a division operator in Python is the modulus, which is used to divide two values. And this one gives us the remainder as a result. When you divide two values, you will get uh, the remainder of it as the result. Another uh, type of uh, Python arithmetic operator is the flow division, which is also known as the integer division used to divide two values and gives the results as an integer or as a whole number. It doesn't give the results as a float number. So the last Python arithmetic operator that, you, that you're going to see is the exponent operator. This one is used to find a, a value when it is raised to a given power. For example, we have the x raised to y. Uh, so, as we have seen the uh, different types of Python arithmetic operators, let us now jump to the examples. Jump to the practical part and see how they are being used. So, uh, before we start our, our, our practical, I'd like us to know that in Python, we have uh, variables value and assignment operators. When I talk about uh, variables, I mean that these are uh, uh, variables that are used to hold values. Values, they can be numbers, they can be strings, and these numbers, they, uh, we, have dif we know that we have different types of numbers. We can have integers, we can have complex numbers, we have real numbers. So variables in Python are used to hold values. Uh, we have the assignment operator, which is uh, an equal sign, which is this one here, which is used to assign values to variables. Okay, now let us see how do we perform uh, addition in Python. We can see that we have our, fa we, uh, our first values here, uh, value as four, and our second value here as six. So when we want to perform addition, we can assign the value to, an, uh, to a variable x and the first uh, value that is, and the second value, which is six, to a variable y. So we can add this one, these two variables x and y, and assign it to another variable z. This one will give us an answer as follows. give us an answer as 10. 
So another uh, Python arithmetic operator that you're going to see is the subtraction operator. We can see that we have a value of 10.5. Uh, so we need to subtract 5 from this 10.5. So we can write it as follows in, in, in Python and get uh, our results as we can see there. Another uh, operator is the mat uh, multiplication operator. You can see that we have the value, to, uh, the first value as two and the second value as nine. We can multiply these two values and get our answer as follows. The other operator that you want to see is the division operator, which we said is the normal division. We can divide these two values as you can see there as follows. 7 divided by 4 as follows. And we have another example there, which is 20 divided by 4 as follows. We see that this division gives us uh, the result as a plot, that is in decimal points. We can see that in our results, we have the result in a in decimal manner. So the other example that we are going to see is the modulo operator which we say that this one is used to divide two values, but it gives the, re, uh, the result as the reminder of the division. So we can see that when we divide 5 divided by 4, we know that the reminder is 1, and we can see that the result there is 1. Uh, the other operator that we're going to see is the flow division, or also known as integer division. When we divide two values, for example, there we have seven and four. And another example there we have 20 and four. When we divide these values, we can see that we get the result as integer as a whole number. We don't get the uh, we don't get the, the results as a as a plus but an integer. As we said before, that this division operator give us the result as whole number or the it gives the integer part of the result so uh the other the last uh example of the a python arithmetic operator that you're going to see is the exponents which we say that this one uh gives help us to find uh the uh, uh to find the results of a value raised to a given power for example, we have x equals to 3 and y equals to 2. Uh, when we want to find uh, the results of x raised to the, uh, to the second power, that is 2, we, uh, we, will, we are going to do as follows. We are using two stars here. You, uh, I need you to know that. We are using two stars to re represent an expo exponent. So we are going to do as follows and get our results. Now let us see uh, what we do when we have uh, multiple arithmetic operators in a mathematical expression as follows. We can see that we have different operators here in the same, same uh, mathematical operation. We have the addition operator, subtraction, multiplication, and the division. So, uh, You'll just give your values as follows, and Python will give you the results as follows. But uh, we need to understand how does this work? How does this work? So for, for us to understand, we are going to see the following table here, which give us, uh, which explain about the arithmetic operator precedence in Python. This one help us to understand which, uh, which operator should be uh, computed, computed first in a given mathematical expression which has uh, multiple arithmetic operators. In this table, we can see that uh, if you are given um, an expression with multiple arithmetic operators, we can see that the first thing that you're supposed to look at the mathematical operation is to see if we have an exponent or um, arithmetic operator, then you have to perform that operation first, then followed by multiplication, 
followed by division, the normal division, followed by the modulus, and followed by the flow division. Then followed by addition and also followed by subtraction. So this is the order of how uh, you can follow when you are giving a mathematical uh, expression with multiple arithmetic operators. Um, I, I hope uh, we have come to the end of the uh, lesson. So what follows is the practical part, as in you're going to have some questions here, whereby you're going to try to answer them with the help of the tutors. They're not that difficult, it's just that we need to see if you have really understood what you have done in the session. So Deborah, can you hear me? Okay, Faith, thank you so, so much for your presentation. So um, we're going to now start with the tutorial. So actually we wanted to put you in breakout rooms right now with the tutors, but unfortunately there's uh, a little bit messed up with our, our, our Zoom. So, so we would want to um, just continue with the, um, the, I mean, the tutorial session here with all of us. So which will be led by someone else. Um, so how we do that um, tutorial, like go through the exercises with you. So, but then before we do that, I want to find out that we all have access to the GitHub. Do we all have access to the GitHub? Please, you can leave it in the chat. Okay, some people have. So those who don't have, is it that you don't have access to the link or something? I'm putting the link again. So that, uh, please, let's all try to go on GitHub and get the... Because we want you to sort of um, do these exercises yourself. Okay, so I put the GitHub link there again. So I'll put the GitHub link there again. And just to go over, just go on Collab, click on the link. It takes, it brings you here, you go on Open in Collab. Once you have this opened, then you can go on File and save a copy in your drive. So it opens a new tab for you, and then you have this copy in your drive. So you can move directly down to where the exercises are so that we could start the exercise. Okay, so oops. so Soha would um, lead us with this exercise then. Thanks. Soha, you could unmute yourself and start. Sorry, I have to unmute her. Um, just a second. Okay, so I think I've asked you to unmute. Oh, sorry. Try again. Try unmuting yourself again. So that. Okay, I think it works now. All right. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, hello, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed this first presentation by Faith Nema Benza. So thank you, Faith. Um, I'm going to go through with you the, to the exercises. So what we're gonna do is uh, we, we will just read the exercise together and then you have um, maybe, let's say five minutes to try. So if you are stuck anywhere, you can just post your question on the chat and the tutor will help you to solve your problem. And after we will look to the solution together. Right, so let me just share my screen. 
So, okay, let me just, I'm um, trying to share my screen. Um, okay, so um, usually when it comes to this technical issue, sometimes you have some back groups. So unfortunately, Soha has a, a few hinges sharing her screen. So I'm going to lead the tutorial sessions on um, arimetric operations then. Okay, so um, we have about three exercises. And like I mentioned, we want to ensure that everyone at least gets something out of this. So the first question is that given x equal to 9, y given x is equal to 9 and y is equal to 2, we should find We should find or write a program to find the solution to x raised to the second power. Mm, nice. Okay, so we want to find um, x raised to the second power. So, I mean, we have x raised to the second power is like square, square of x, right? So if x is equal to 9, we want to find, write a Python um, um, solution so that we can find x raised to the power of 2 or oh, yes yeah, square of x so I don't know please can we get interactive in the chat um, can anyone sort of um, help with the uh, answer maybe you know how we can go about this how do we go about this if we are given this question that we should find the square of x raised to the second power. What can we do? Please, you can write in the chat. So I'll give about um, some few minutes for us to think about this, how we can go about this. Yeah, so I'm going to check time so we can be on time. Yeah. Any idea? Okay, someone says x star star 2. Okay, okay, x equal. So let's try it, right? Let's try it together so everyone can see. I hope, I believe you can all see my screen, right? So someone says we make it x star, x star star 2. Let's do this. What do we get? Mm, it throws an error. Okay, it's telling us that name x is not defined. So what does this probably mean? Can anyone tell us why we are getting x is not defined? And please, the tutors, um, please, and there are some questions on um, unable to do the two at the same time. So if some people are asking for access to the collab, so if you could be reading the chats and helping with this response, it would be very helpful. So um, I, can, I hope you can all see the screen. We have, okay, good. Dominic says we have to define the values. Yeah, that's right. We, we, we just didn't define what x was. And we just said x square square, uh, x star star 2. So Python doesn't know what x is. So we first have to define x. So let's say we define x on top. Let's say x, we know x is equal to what, 9. So let's run this again and see what happens. Oh. We have 81. Is this right? Is 9 raised to the power 2, 81? Is this right? Is this answer right? Okay, let me see the chat. Yes, it's right. Awesome. So we got it. So one thing we have gotten to learn from here is that um, before we use anything in Python, we first have to define it. So we needed to first define that x is equal to 9. And then we wrote what we wanted. We wanted that x square of uh, um, square of x should give us eighty one. That's what we wanted for question one. So yay, we made it. Let's go to the next question then. The next question says we should write a program to find the solution to x plus y multiplied by x minus y. Okay. So we want to find 
solution to x. So we take x and add to y. So when we find that x, x plus y, then we multiply that result by x minus y. I hope that is clear. That question is clear for everyone. Is there any way someone can like give an idea as to what we can do? Anyone with an idea? We want to find x plus y. Then we take what result we get and multiply by x minus y. Okay. So BJ says result. I'm going to take BJ a response. Okay. Let's take what BJ says and see what we get. Great, so let's try this. I'm trying to divide my screen, so. Okay, BJ says X results is equal to, I'm just using the first response, right? So we see how it works. Times X minus Y, okay? So um, do we have to define the variables for X and Y here again? Okay, so, um, Humphrey says x equals to nine, y equals, okay, so Humphrey, you want us to define x first equal to nine, then do y is equal to two, right? Okay, then Hijara also says the same thing, awesome, Allah, Juan, yeah, can see all your responses, great. So let's try to run this and see what we get. Oh, we can't assign to a literal. So what's, what could be this? Why are we getting this error? I thought, um, Humphrey said we should just say x equal to nine. Oh, I, I should not put this comma. Should that be the case? It's still giving us an error. So what should we do? Yeah, we need to define the variables. Hajara. Yes, okay. So yes, he says we should be in a different line. Great, so let's make it in a different line then and see what happens. All right, so let's run this again and see. Okay, it runs, but we can't see an error. But where is our result? I thought it should give us a value. How come I cannot see the answer? I should print. Okay, I should print what, BJ? What should I print? I'll print result. Okay, print first. Okay, let's try that and see. Oh, it gives an answer 77. Okay, so I think what we have learned from here now is that we defined, we first of all defined X and Y on the same line, we got an error. So we had to um, put this on the next line. Okay, and Bernard is also giving us an idea that instead of the comma, we could also use this to write all the values in the same line. So let's try if that works. Okay, that works too. So we have learned two things. First is that Instead of writing this with comma, y, the next value, we cannot do that because it will tell us there's a literal error, but we can use the semicolon to define our values, right? That's one way. Otherwise, we could just write the value on a different line, then Python would understand. I hope we got that right, okay? And also the results, first of all, we save this result in a, the, this whole value in a variable we name called rest. And when we did that, we could not see the answer. We were only able to see the answer when we printed this result. So this tells us that the print is able to allow us or display the results to whatever we gave to it here. Great. So I think we have learned something from this as well. So let's try to uh, move to the next exercise and see. Okay, so the next exercise says that write a program to find the solution to x raised to the power so, sorry, we write a program to find the solution to x raised to the power y, power multiplied by y divided by 2. And the division should be a floor division. Hmm. We're seeing things here. So, we are saying we should first find the solution to x raised to the power y, right? 
or y power multiplied by y? How do we understand this question? Anyone with an idea? Anyone with an idea? Oh, people have already given me responses. Um, okay, Bethin also answered. Oh, Bethin also gave us a, a different idea with the first question. I hope we can all see it in the chat. Maybe you should look at it as well. Okay. Okay, all right. So we, I'm seeing the chats. So Salome says that what if we did not save the result in rest? Okay, so if we did not save it in rest and we take away this, as well as take away print, what do we get? Oh, we still get the same answer. So that means that we could still get the same answer without saving this as a variable name, right? Okay. I just wanted to go back and ensure we're done with that question. And Bethin also says, um, okay, Humphrey, you asked the question, why were we able to get the answer in exercise one without using print function? Oh, okay. So here we just called it this way with the adding print and it gave us the answer. So I just repeated the same for this and we also got the answer. So that means that the print can help us display the value based on if we have a variable name that we give to it, like we had rest is equal to this and then we wanted to print rest, right? So it just gave us the answer for what rest is. But we would, we don't see the need to use stress if already we are calling this directly, right? Okay, and then um, okay. So you see now. Let's go to the next question. Okay, let's try to finish the next question. Is that um, write a program to find the solution to x raised to the to y power multiplied by y divided by two, and the division should be a floor division. So Toyo C says it should be x raised the power y, everything times y divided by two. Toyo C, can you explain why we are doing all of this dividing y divided by two? Yeah, like everything. Like... Okay, but then the question is that we should write a program to find the solution to x raised the power y, right? So x, first of all, should be raised to the power y, which Toyesi, Toyesi, sorry, has done for us. Um, that's x raised to the power y. And then multiply by y divided by 2. OK, so let's try what Toyesi has said and see if this will work first. So she, he or she said this, i, that, then y divided by 2, right? Let's run this. Oh, we get an answer, 81. Mm. Okay, so that's the answer. So, so what what is this um, floor division? What is a floor division? And Joan also says um, it's asking us to find x raised to the power all over y times y divided by two. Okay, I think um, uh, what Joan is asking us to do is a different thing. Like we should do this. Then we have, sorry, we have y times y divided by two. Let's see if we get the same answer. Oh, we get the same answer as well. Could there be a reason why we're getting the same answers for, for these? Like the way we express them, we're still getting the same answer. Okay, can't see it. Okay. And please, I, I want us to understand what is the floor division because there's a key word here. I don't know what it is. What what is should be a floor division? Like what is a floor division? Does anyone have an idea? Like did we hear of floor division throughout the presentation? Like did did she um, did Faith mention anything about floor division? What is it? What is floor division? What is a floor division, please? Okay, um, um, Isaac says floor division gives a result as an integer, not a float. Mm, that's another thing. So what is an integer, what is not a float? Then Sewade says 
Note that the division should be a floor division. Okay, so Sewadi is emphasizing that the division should be floor division. And Isaac says floor division gives a result as an integer, not float. Okay, so um, Isaac is just repeating what he already said. Okay, Isabel says we should use double slash instead of the one. Okay, Isabel, so I should do here another this, right? And run this. What do we get? Ah, we get 81 without points, zero. Oh, okay, okay. So that tells us that if we add this double, it gives us 81, which is an integer like Isaac mentioned. And the float is when we have that 81.0.1, like a, a decimal, that's the float, right? But then you have just one single value, then that is the integer, okay? So let's try to get this that in Python, this double slash would give us um, a, a floor division, which would produce an integer. And then just the one slash would rather give us, would rather give us um, a float, which is 81.0. I hope we've all taken notice of the difference. So first I use one slash, then we got 81.0. But then when we add, the second slash, then we got 81, which is just an integer. So the floats division helps it helps you get an integer rather than um, a float, right? Okay, so I think um, if this, this is it for everyone, like if this makes sense, if you don't have questions. Yeah, sorry, I think I'm missing some questions here. Um, Dominic. At Dominic, the answer is 81.0. So why do we have a zero? So the zero is a float. Okay, Dominic, uh, Albert is asking a question. Who, who has an, idea, an answer to this? Isaac is saying that the answer is 81.0. So why do we have the zero? So does it mean that the points, the zero actually is, is a float or what? So who can answer this? Okay, so as he says, the one division gives decimal results while the double gives a whole number results. Okay. Does that answer your question, Albert? Okay, and Joan says that float is a number after a decimal point. Yes, the zero is a float. Okay, and then Gloria says 81.0 is a float and 81 is an integer. So I think that's just what you need to understand. So if we have anything 81 points something, whether it's zero, whatever that comes after it, as far as we have the point, then we this is a decimal, right? And that is the float. But if we have just a single value, an integer, then sure we don't have we are dealing with uh, just that this is not this is not um, a decimal this is an integer like you just have one single value yeah so um just to summarize what we've gotten from this exercise we have gotten to understand how the print function here works how it's able to give us our results we've also learned how to raise a number like find the square of a number we've also learned how to multiply two numbers We've also learned how to save results of whatever, whether multiplication or addition we do. We save it in a variable name and use print to call that variable name to give us our results. And most importantly, we've been able to understand what the floor division is and how we can do the floor division in Python using the one slash and then the double slash and we understood that if we use the one slash then we'll be getting a decimal or a float as our final answer but if we use the double slash then we'll be getting an integer as our final answer so if there are no other questions i would want us to go on a five minutes break we should be here by 9.56. So what I will, I will recommend is just, just leave your um, your um, Zoom. Don't leave the Zoom account, just be on. Or you can be discussing, talk about anything. Like I can try to unmute everyone. So you could just chat, chit chat, then 
after five minutes, we go to the next um, tutorial. Right. Okay. Thank you so much for your time for the first tutorial. Okay. So I'm going to try to unmute everyone and then stop recording as well.